The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com, and today we're conducting a sea trial and features inspection of the Andros Boatworks Offshore 32. Two years in research and development produced what Andros says is the most fishable and comfortable center console. Traditionally, this boat is powered with twin 300s. Here, we're using the twin 300 Evinrude E-Tech G2, so let's start right in and see how they performed on the water. The 300s reached full speed at 5800 RPM, which produced a top speed of 46.1 knots. Best economy seemed to come in at 4500 RPM and 31.2 knots. That speed produced a fuel burn of 20.7 gallons per hour, which translates into a range of 407 nautical miles. We reached planing speed in 3.8 seconds, accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 4 seconds, and continued through 30 in 6.4 seconds. In our handling tests, the Offshore 32 completed every maneuver with ease. Her deep V design, with 24 degrees of dead rise at the transom, cut through the 1 to 2 foot chop nicely, and when we ran through the wakes of larger vessels, she felt solid on re entry. Now, let's go over some of her more notable features. The match between the Andros Offshore 32 and the 300 ETEC G2 is one of reliability. Simply put, there are fewer parts and therefore fewer things that can fail. The power steering is now integrated into the engine body, so the clutter at the mounting bracket is gone. The polymer engine cowling can be color matched to the boat if desired. It's got an auto winterization feature that's great for seasonal layups or for the boats at vacation homes. We also like the beltless magneto providing the 133 amp output and 50 of those amps are dedicated to the panel. And with in-cylinder fuel injection we get a more accurate fuel delivery. Because this is an offshore platform we need a robust lower unit and the G2300 delivers. This lower unit gear case has been streamlined while still incorporating a larger gear set along with an electronic shift mechanism. This not only gives increased durability but allows larger props to be used for providing more thrust. With the electronic shifting, the digital controls at the helm can now have many more features such as cruise assist, engine sync with multiple engines, and single stick operations. And we also like the eye trim that auto trims the engine for optimum performance. Operationally, one of the nicest features we saw was that the fuel management system is above deck and easily accessible. And you don't have to be a contortionist to access all the pumps either. With the steering now integrated into the engines, there are no rams or hydraulic hoses cluttering up the engine well. Standard on the boat is 150 gallons of live well space, 100 gallons between the two open storage compartments in the cockpit deck, and 50 gallons more at the transom. Another optional 50 gallons can go up forward. Moving ahead to the leaning post, we have open storage above with two spool holders. Just below are six tackle sorters along with two drawers and a removable cooler below. Above are three rod and two drink holders. The helm panel is designed for twin 12-inch screens and Andros uses a clever cover system that closes everything off to weather and becomes easily accessible with the glass stowing out of the way when not needed. Plenty of storage is under the seat. This is a single station layout, but a dual station is available with a tower. The hardtop is standard and five more rod holders are mounted to the aft end. Moving around the console, there are plenty of rod holders to each side, and from the front, there's plenty of storage. And the six foot two inches of headroom was not lost on us. A head option is available. Two hinged panels allow access to the back of the electronics and NEMA plugs up top, and batteries and rigging below. To the stern and side decks, there are four storage boxes, two to each side, and each one is designed so that it can hold four larger size steel 105 tanks for a total of 16. As we move to the bow, the fishability becomes even more evident. There are no seats, although they are available. This allows us to fish all the way forward and indeed right around the bow. With bolster starting at 19 inches and topping out at 26 inches, the rails bring the cockpit depth to 29 inches. And notice how they're recessed to prevent snags. The bow has one big noticeable difference. Where others may have higher gunnels to produce a drier ride, here Andros uses hull form to create its dry ride and keep the gunnels within gaffing range of the surface. In the deck is a huge fish box, 9 feet long and nearly 4 feet deep. There are two smaller access hatches for sliding smaller fish in on the fly, but if needed, open up the big hatch for the larger catch. Cast netters will love the forward platform and its added safety factor of the raised tow rail to alert where the edge is without having to constantly look down. With regards to the anchor locker, I was happy to see that the hatch lies flat to take the strain off the hinges. An 8-inch cleat just ahead secures the anchor road. 
Clearly, the design team at Andros Boatworks makes their boats with fishing first and foremost in mind, and family comfort can be added as desired. This is a great handling boat, and with twin 300 Evinrude E-Tech G2s, there's a good balance of speed and economy. And that's my full test and features inspection of the Andros Boatworks Offshore 32. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.